All right, Sky Squad, we are back in the building. And I have here someone very special. Her name is Zaina. You guys may have heard that name sprinkled throughout the season of Married to Medicine. And, you know, we had sort of scheduled to try to have this conversation before the reunion ended. But, you know, Zaina, you had to do some, you know, traveling. And so now yeah. you're back. And now we have the opportunity to sit and chat. And before we get started, I want to say, one, thank you for doing this. Of course. Thank you. And number two, can you tell us a little bit about, like, how like your background like yeah. who is Zaina? where like <laughs> how, how did you how did we get here <laughs> yes right well first of all thank you for having me thank you for giving me the opportunity to say who i am <laughs> first of all so i'm Zaina weast i am if you couldn't tell from my accent i'm actually originally from london england i have moved okay. to atlanta about 16 years ago and with my American husband, um, I run a um, business here in Atlanta. I'm an interior designer and I have a couple of showrooms here in Atlanta. Um, and I have four children and, you know, living the life in Atlanta. So that's who I am really in short. <laughs> okay. How did you get into interior design? Like, was that always a passion of yours? It, it always was. I was believe it or not, ever since I was about 11 years old, um, I always showed interest in fashion and in interior design. And many moons ago, I actually was a fashion model back in the UK. And so, what? yep, did that for a little bit. And then um, started doing some interior design. I actually uh, graduated with a law degree, then went back to school, got myself an interior design degree. So I've kind of been uh, all over the place. But when I moved to Atlanta, um, you know, I saw so much potential to sort of, you know, these big Mac mansions just blew me away coming from, you know, London, where, you know, our homes and our country is not that big, let alone our, you know, homes. Um, and so I said, you know, I'm really going to sort of dive deep into this and to so start doing um, uh, interior design here. And just my clients just loved the pieces I would pick for them. I would travel to get unique pieces. And they said, you know, Zena, you really need to have somewhere where we can just come and take a look at your pieces. So I opened my first uh, showroom here in Atlanta or Milton, Georgia. That took off. And then I've got now my second one in Alpharetta. So, and the rest is history. I love, you know, when I, whenever I do these interviews, I always find people who have sort of lived multiple lives. And I always think it's so fascinating how you've gone from, a modeling to then you know a law degree yeah. and then now to where you are now let me ask you this did you did you move here to the states you know uh after meeting your husband or did Actually. how did that happen so chris my husband was traveling in the uk for a little bit and one night we were all out i won't say where because <laughs> i don't think my parents know exactly where we met yet Court, they think we met in a restaurant, so let's leave it as that. But um, but it was a nice place. We met uh, uh, somewhere out in London, and you know we started chatting, and you know started dating over the sea uh, for three years actually, and then finally got married. And the plan was to uh, live in London, but somehow he was able to talk me into moving to the, or trying out the states. He said, "Let's just go try it." Um, he grew up in Long Island, New York. So, you know, they had a pool and all that stuff. So it's like in London, I just want, you know, we want to start a family soon. And I don't know that we'll be able to give the, out, the you know, outdoor kind of a life to the kids like he grew up with that he wanted for the kids. He said, so let's try it. So we moved, to, I, I moved to Long Island for one year, moved over there and uh, his job, job transferred him to Atlanta and we've been here ever since. Mm -hmm. hmm. Did you have any fear about moving here, like long I did. term? I did. Well, you know, moving to New York, people kept saying, you know, in New York is very similar to London. And when we were dating, you know, I went back and forth several times. New York, you know, I wasn't really, um, you know, so worried about it. I think because I come from such a big family and being, you know, I, I, my whole life in London, um, I was more about, I was worried more about leaving all that behind. Mm. Um, but you know, I, I'm very well traveled. I traveled around the world. So the traveling and starting somewhere new didn't worry me. It was more about friends and family. Um, so, uh, moving to New York didn't bother me as much, but 
Atlanta, when I heard Georgia, it, that scared me because I had no idea, you know, what the South was like. Um, and so, you know, and a lot of people, believe it or not, from New York scared me about the South. They're like, oh, you're moving to the South? Oh, no. And so I actually did not want to move at all. And in fact, I told my husband to tell his company, no, I'm not taking the job. And so I guess the company really wanted him for the job. So they said, here, take her down there for the weekend. To only keep her in Atlanta. Do not take her out of exit, I think, <laughs> like exit eight. Keep her there. And then they, they had a realtor, like, booked for us to show us about 25 homes. And it was, I guess it was supposed to work out. It was like a beautiful day in October. You come to Atlanta, weather's just right. The trees are gorgeous. You know, people are sitting outside eating. And so we're driving down and I said to her husband, did you plan this? Are these all actors? Because <laughs> it was just like everything, it just looked perfect. And of course, then when I went to, you know, started going into these neighborhoods, I was like, oh my goodness, we can really get this for this much? You know, and being in the business, I was like, wow, how I can decorate this house and this house. And that was it. We put an offer in the house, we moved, and the rest is history. But it, to answer your question, I was scared. Yeah. I, I can imagine. I mean, it to me, I've, I've always kind of wanted to live in London myself, like for yeah. at least a short period of time, just to like say yeah. I did it. Um, so it's just fascinating to hear your story coming yeah. from London to here. Um, I love London. I, I already love it. I, I've only been once, but I yeah. fell in love. It really, and of course, it's bias coming from me, but it's an amazing time. There's nothing not to like, you know. I know that you, you know, Americans will say the weather, but, you know, the rain is part of the experience and the culture over there, the tradition. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you get used to it, I guess. Yes. Okay. Okay. And you spoke about friends and, and sort of making friends in Atlanta. And so, you know, friends are a big part of, you know, of course, the Married to Medicine show that we yes. all watch and where we first kind of, at least for Married to Medicine fans, got our first glimpse of Zayna. So I want to know, how did you become enmeshed in this friendship circle? Like, who did you know first? How were you introduced? And, and what happened? Absolutely. So, you know, um, I am... A quite a social person. <laughs> um, I love life. I'm living the life. Uh, given my business, the type of business I'm in, I have a huge social circle. Um, and so, you know, with the host circle, social circle, within that social circle, I have different circles of friends. I have my really close-knit uh, friends. I have my neighbors. I have my church friends. I have my, you know, soccer mom friends. So different circles, right? Um, how I got involved really with the marriage medicine team, um, I, the neighborhood I'm living in right now, I've been here about 12 years. And about, I believe it was about four years ago, um, Toya, moved, Toya Harris moved in. Her and I became very good friends. First started as neighbors, and then, you know, she, uh, I helped her do some interior design, and we became really, really good friends. Um, so that's kind of, the, she was the first person I've met from the, from, from, from the show. Um, and a couple of years later, um, Anila moved in uh, to the neighborhood. Um, I bought Anila's, my, so my husband and I are also, um, outside of our day job, we're also real estate investors. So we invest in um, residential homes. Uh, and so when Anila built her house here in the neighborhood, she was looking to sell her townhouse. She didn't have the time to uh, do it up. Um, and so we said, we'll take you off your hands as is. So we bought, purchased her house. So I met Anila through that. Um, and then I met Quad through Anila. And then I, through Quad and um, not really Quad, through Anila, I then met Heavenly and then Contessa just through going to mutual sort of events, if you would. So you, like, I mean, this is all, all happens very organically with you and this, and this group. So, Correct. you know, it, when we saw the show, we, it, it seemed as though Toya made it, at least the impression that I got was that you guys were not friends. Did something happen that led yes. to that? She is correct. You know, we are not friends anymore. We were really good friends for several months, uh, uh, maybe even a couple of years. Um, and actually, you know, uh, maybe just about the time when I met Anila, 
that's when uh, Toya and I started having sort of some issues with our friendship. And it was to do with, um, I guess, you know, being a businesswoman, I am, um, when somebody comes to you and say, especially in my business, they want my help in decorating or they want to, um, you know, utilize my showrooms, they're beautiful for filming. I've had, I have had allowed other shows to film in my store. And so really, the, it, it's a long story, but without going into it too much, um, uh, when Anila approached me and said, I'd like to do, um, uh, f do some filming, it was her first season, I'd, I need a location for filming and I'd like to film at your store. Um, I agreed um, and Toya wasn't too happy with that because at the time they were not getting along. Um, and so that turned into some sort of, you know, heartache, I, I guess. And then um, Anila had a birthday party for her daughter during her first season. Um, and she really wanted me to be at that uh, party because she mentioned that, you know, some of her original friends, Indian friends, as she calls them, you know, weren't happy with her being in a show and they're making fun of her and she just needed a lot of support. And so she really okay. wanted me to go um, and dress up in the traditional Indian clothes. She invited my sister. And so I went to uh, that event. I think it was like her holy or holy event that we went to. Um, and really that's the time when Toya, when she saw me there, she got really upset over it. We then got back from that event and we had some conversations over text where she mentioned, she said, you know, you know that I'm not getting along with her and we're good friends and why are you going? And I reassured her that it was because, I, you know, I got to know Anila through being here and um, that there was nothing more. She's just a neighbor who invited me. So it's very sort of transparent about, about it. But I guess in some way, um, Toya felt like I shouldn't have gone. Um, and I think uh, from conversation from um, escalated from there because her and um, Anila during the filming of that season were I guess not, really, not getting along at all. Um, and so really it's sound, as, as silly as it sounds, that's what kind of started the end of our friendship uh, with uh, Toya and, and me. Wow. Did she think that you were maybe like somehow trying to get on the show through Anila or like, cause sometimes I've, I've heard of this yeah. happening. Yeah, I think, you know, there's always maybe that insecurity in some of these ladies. Um, but I think what, you know, my take um, on what I feel like happened with Toya, um, it, I think in some way she probably thought you are my friend first and there's this woman that I'm fighting with on the show. Gotcha. is you know trying to be your friend why are you even giving him giving her a time giving her the time uh, mm -hmm. one and two i think what what um not i think i know what finally broke the camel's back was apparently one of her production um and i have these text messages going back and forth from toya still um one of her production asked her to bring me to one of her um uh, scenes that I wasn't even aware of. Um, I was actually going to be out of the country, uh, going to England to take care of my dad during that time. Um, and so Toya sent me a uh, snapshot of that text message from her production team who said, um, you're going to be doing a fashion show and Zaina's going to come and knock on your door and you're going to open the door, you're going to say hi. And she said, Zaina, I don't remember asking her. Uh, and they said, oh, no, she's going to come. Now, meanwhile, meanwhile I had no idea that they or they were arranging this scene. Uh, I wouldn't I wasn't even going to be able to make it anyway because I was flying off the day before. So I was completely unaware of it. But Toya thought I knew and Toya thought I may have done, it may have something to do with me and Anila arranging this with the production. So I tried to tell her, I said, I wasn't even going to be in the country for this thing. Um, and so that kind of turned into a very heated conversation because some of the, she said some very hurtful things like, are you trying to take food off of my kid's plate? Like ridiculous things. And um, I tried to say, hey, you know, you got this wrong. You're going to regret this. We're, you know, I'm not that type of a person, but, it, you know, I, I guess she wasn't willing to listen. And um, I actually then said, well, if you if there's no trust in this friendship, um, then it's not going to work. Just like any relationship, you need trust. You need to be able to you know give people um, 
the, the chance to talk and listen and just not go by a narrative or a story that's been made through uh, whatever you've seen. Um, and so uh, for, the, for now, we're just going to have to go our own ways, which is what we did. Wow. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm always sorry to hear about it in real life a friendship that ends. Yep. It, you know what I'm saying? Because it seems like miscommunication, like behind the scenes, things yeah. that maybe were perceived differently. Question, yeah. did you, my question for you is, would you outside of your kind of like just supportive role as a friend, would you yeah. ever have wanted to be on the show? Not really. However, well, you meant you say support. Now, I remember in a couple of, I did uh, do a couple of scenes with um, Toya and um, specifically because she used those words. Um, she said, you know, um, at first I refused. And then she said, listen, you're one of my really good friends. And, uh, I, I, you know, my, my show is like my business, just like you have a business. Mm. And just like I will support your business, I'll come and shop at your shop. You know, you have to do the same. So I opened up my home to, um, for her to film here one day because we were also in the same tennis team. So Toya and I actually did a lot of things together. We were captaining a te tennis team out of the neighborhood. Our husbands knew each other. They were hanging out. Our two boys are almost the same age. They were hanging out. So although we knew each other um, for just about a year, we, did, we were together almost every day. And so when a friend that close says to you, look, I need your support, um, we, the show always needs locations, and uh, because you're part of my tennis team, the story that I, my storyline right now, involves um, um, have the tennis team. And she also did a charity event for uh, uh, Black Lives Matter and me being a co-captain. Um, I couldn't just not support her doing that. So I supported that event as well. So again, a long answer, but um, in support of my friend, I did um, um, agree to do some of those scenes with them. Gotcha. With specifically. Um, so I kind of want to move into what, where we saw you at the Christmas party. How did that whole, how did the Christmas party come about? Like, cause that scene was kind of, yeah, it was a little disjointed in terms of what was happening in your presence yeah. there. Right. Right. Um, so when I watched the, that clip, obviously it was taken by I was shocked as how, I don't know if it's something to do with the editing or what, but um, let me answer your question first as to how I came to the Christmas party, right? Um, since, uh, you know, uh, Toya and I were friends, I then, as I said, I met Anila. Through Anila, I met Quad. Quad then also became a friend. She be also became a client who was shopping at my store. And, you know, I'm a great... Um, a believer of supporting people that support me and so not just uh, you know quite was not just a friend but also supporting my small business and um, when she was having this Christmas party I was in the UK taking care of my dad and she sent me a couple of text messages sending me photos of some of the furniture she was purchasing um, just for feedback and so we were going back and forth and that's when she mentioned hey if you're in town um, I know you've, I've been invited to your birthday party, which I can't make. Thank you. But if you're in town, I'm having this Christmas party. Please come along. And that was the invite. When I got back to the uh, uh, States, um, I was talking to Anila or Anila called me and she asked me if I was going to Quad's party. I said, yeah, I'm going to make every effort to go because I appreciate that she has supported my business especially at a very difficult time in my life where I've been away. Um, and so I'm going to go to support her. I actually had no idea that this event was going to be filmed. I truly thought it was a, uh, just a Christmas party and a um, housewarming for her. And so that's when Anila um, said, you have to ride with me. You have to come with me. Um, and I mentioned, no, I'm going to take a friend with me because uh, Anila actually told me that it was going to be filmed. So that's when I said, okay, if it's going to be filmed, then, you know, you guys go are going to do your own thing. I'm still going to go to support um, Quad. So I'm going to take a friend with me so that I can, you know, I have my wingman kind of thing. So I don't have to be um, um, uh, near the, the, the scenes. 
Um, and she said, no, no, you don't need to bring a friend. Um, just come right, right with me. Now, everything's kind of making sense about these conversations now, but at the time, um, um, it didn't. Uh, but I still said, I'm going to uh, um, invite a friend because since you've told me you're filming, um, it's best that I go with, uh, I take somebody. So I invited a friend whose name I'm not going to mention because I don't think that she would want to be mentioned or want to be part of this show. This friend of mine um, was having some relational, relationship issues at the time, which Anila found out. What I didn't know was going on behind my back was when Anila found out I was taking this friend with me, she reached out to this friend without my knowledge and trying to encourage her to come, which I just found out actually recently. That friend got really worried about why somebody would call her and invite her to a party, but she didn't know her that well, so she didn't go. So my friend told me, hey, I'm not going to go. Things came up, so I invited somebody else. So I have another friend, Stacy, who you guys see a little bit of in the show. She came with me. When we got to the, um, I'm sorry, so let me back up again how I ended up going with um, um, uh, Anila. So Stacy and myself, we had booked our driver to take us to the um, um, uh, event. Um, and Anila said, no, Bravo sending me a car. Why are you guys going to take a car? Come and ride with me. And I said, no, because, you know, you guys are going to film. Again, I'm trying to do, after, the, after what happened between um, Toya and I, where Toya suspected that I may have uh, reached out to her production to be on the show, I was extremely careful about their scenes to the point where when Anila did her housewarming, I made a point to go to her housewarming when everything was done at 9 mm. p.m. I still wanted to go to support her as a friend, but I wanted to go once, once the cameras were gone. Um, so I wanted to um, 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 go, my, uh, go separately. So I told Anila, I, can't, I don't want to go with you be, just because you guys are filming and over and over again. So she said, no, Bravo's sending me a car and it's a big car. Nobody's going to be filming at this, you know, in the car. You and Stacy come with me. And so that, you know, we can ride together. There's no point you, you know, taking a drive and you can come back with me. So I, I still didn't want, I still refused to go. Then she said, hey, for my... Um, uh, and it's all making sense now, right? So she said, um, for my housewarming, you put your sari on, the traditional Indian sari, she said, and everybody spoke about how perfectly you wore it, and my mom wants you to put our sari on for her. So please come to my house before we go and um, help my mom put our sari on. And then, you know, if you decide to go with us, you can go with us. So Stacy and I went to her, ma her house. We, I helped her mom put her sari on, and the car, the Bravo car, I don't know if it was a Bravo cover, that's what she said, was waiting outside. And that's when she said, cancel your car, come with us. And so Stacy and I just looked at each other and said, okay, we're here now, let's just go. So we jumped in her car and then we, we got to, um, they parked us in somewhere close to uh, Quad's house um, to mic everybody. So they got all the mics out and they said, Zaina too. And I said, oh, no, no, no. I'm just you know, riding with her to go to the party. I don't want to be mic'd. Um, and then Lily said, no, you have to. And I said, I, 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 you know, I don't want to be part of any scenes. And she says, well, look, it's going to look really bad when you walk into the house with me as my friend, because you're going to be right next to me. And, you know, if, you, if you're if you mute, like, because, you know, remember you quad bought stuff from your house. It'd be nice for you to go and say, oh, quad, this is beautiful. Comment on your pieces. Um, and I have no reasons to believe anything other than what someone's telling me, especially if this is a friend. If I call somebody my friend, I'm not thinking that they're messy because, I, you know, I have no reason to. So I'm like, you know what? You're right because, you know, she did purchase things from me. And I will, you know, it does make sense for me to hire, you know, nice things. And again, bi the business side of me thinking, well, you know, um, it, it might be a nice, you know, exposure for my shop at the same time because she has purchased pieces, right? Okay, I'll put a mic on. Um, and so Stacy encouraged me. She said, okay, that's a good reason. Put a mic because Stacy's a really good friend of mine. So... I got mic'd, we walked through the door, we did just that. Hi, hello, it, you know, um, uh, greeted everybody. And then we were sitting on the sofa, as you saw on, on, on the scene. And of course, um, um, Toya and Anila um, started having a, some, some discussions. Um, and when Toya mentioned that, uh, you know, did one of you guys start this rumor about me, um, we were, I guess we were all kind of shocked. So going back to the rumor, 
the piece that they don't show on the show is that I did mention that, yes, I heard about it. It's not something that I started. Because I, Contessa asked me, she said, so do you know about this um, rumor? And I said, yes, I've heard about the rumor. I didn't mention who I heard it from. I kind of wish that I didn't say anything at all. But there's a part in the scene where I say to Toya, you don't want me to open my mouth because you don't want me to say uh, something along those lines, like, or I know you, you don't want people to hear what I have to say, or something along those lines. After that, they, they didn't sh you know, show what I actually said, because then I turned around to Stacy and told her why um, Toya and I stopped speaking, because my next comment was, it is so petty that you thought that I was going to get on your show telling me things like, I'm, I'm taking food off of your children's play, um, and, and, you know, it, the, that was the reason why we stopped talking. And the fact that you were so jealous or whatever the reason it was, um, that the fact that I allowed Toy, um, Anila to film at my store and, the, and because I went to her daughter's birthday party, you were so upset about that, that this, you know, um, uh, friendship was over because of it. And it's so petty. So that's what I meant that I didn't want, when I said, you don't want me to open my mouth, I meant about, you know, really, do you really want people to hear this pettiness, right? So that's the part they show on that clip. Um, and so that's really how, long answer again, so, but that's really how I ended up at the, at the, at the Christmas party. No, because what you did was you described for us something that was the way it was presented. If I'm not, if I'm not, if I'm remembering, remembering correctly, Anila made it seem, at least from the television, that you asked her for a ride to the yeah. event. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's not true. That is not true at all whatsoever. Yeah, and I was very disappointed to see that because I, so I don't really watch the show much. Um, you know, I put the show on to support my friends here and there, um, but I don't get to watch it. It comes on on a Sunday night. Um, but when I started hearing about this rumor, I started tuning on to some of these scenes. And I have to say that I was very disappointed and taken back um, because that is not what happened. Absolutely not what happened. Did you ever have an opportunity to follow up with Anila about that? I did. I did. Okay. Um, I think when I, I actually have a text message where I wrote that sentence where she told Andy, I was just an Uber girl or something along those like this. I was an Uber for her. I, so I wrote that sentence. I said, really? Um, Cause I actually was so shocked. I, I, I didn't know exactly how to ask. Um, and she came back and said, no, they were picking on me. I just needed something. They were, if I didn't say that, they were going to think that, you know, that I planned this, that this was something that um, was already in, in the plan so that I bring you so I can, you know. So she, she just danced around it, danced around, and we never got anywhere. And then there were a couple of other scenes where she didn't exactly mention my name, but it's almost like alluded to where the rumor may have come up come from you know I have a really amazing group of friends that they're, they're, they're where there's trust there's support there's loyalty and some of these ladies have seen some of the show and they were in disbelief so they started sending me these clips and said you really need to you know watch out for this girl you you've always had her back you, you know when you call somebody friend you we know you're a very loyal friend a supportive friend and you're doing this to this girl meaning supporting her and being loyal to her blindly because there is a story that she's been telling it sounds like she's been it's been building and then this christmas uh um uh party was her, the finale of how she you know roped you into this you really got to watch this so I started watching some of it and saw the pattern and confronted her and she literally danced around it and I think even to the point when they got to the reunion um, I got a phone call from um, 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 Quad um, and even then she was trying to bring my name and making stuff up like oh Zaina wanted Zaina wanted to um, exchange 
uh, information with Quad because she wanted to go on the housewife, like ridiculous stuff like that, which of course I said, absolutely no. And Quad knows that that's not true. Both of us are, you know, very shocked. But ultimately, Richie, I think, um, poor girl, I feel very sorry for her. Um, she joined this, you know, just knowing her on a personal side outside of the show, um, she obviously wanted to be in this show uh, uh, badly because I've seen the process um, in the beginning how she, you know, how Toya got her in the show and the desperation and everything. Um, and, you know, she struggled during uh, her first season and she simply ran out of um, a storyline, which is something that she kept saying to me, hey, I need a storyline, which I was confused about because my understanding of a reality show was that your life is the storyline. Right, <laughs> so, right, and right. Then when, when, when then she went, so when she started stressing out about trying to find a storyline, I was confused. But then it all makes sense now. Um, because if you think about it, you know, she, because, uh, uh, you know, obviously I gave this a lot of thought. I'm thinking if I'm her, she's thinking, uh, I, I don't want it to come from me, but Zaina is the perfect person because Zaina and Toya had a fallout. The names that she brought up that Toya was meant to be having an affair with is um, the, you know, person that one of my friends, uh, it's my friend's boyfriend or her other half. Um, who I don't want to mention the name, um, who Anila found out at a really little event in her house that they were having issues in their relationship and they live in the neighborhood. So all that information together gave her a really good story uh, to put together um, and thought, here, let me rope Zaina in because now when I look back at you know, all the other um, meetings that we've had uh, outside of the show, the lunch with Quad, the dinner that she arranged with, you know, um, uh, Heavenly, all of that, and the questioning during that time and what she's been saying to me uh, to get my support. Um, I'm really struggling with these girls. They pick on me. They're ganging up on me. You know, my Indian friends don't like me anymore. They judge me for being in this show. Um, you know, playing victim, victim the whole time. Um, and I really, you know, felt sorry for her. And really, really felt sorry for her and completely blind to what she was actually doing until, of course, the, the show started airing and I started seeing those scenes. So that is why it, 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 we could be guessing, right? Is, is that why you think she was trying to call that specific friend to bring her to the party? Correct. She was very eager to bring that friend to that show. And that friend of mine and I spoke after these scenes came out. Um, and she, that's when she said, she said, when Anila found out that I had invited her to come to the show, uh, some sorry, come to the Christmas party, um, she, Anila was reaching out to her desperately, please come, please come, please come, which didn't make any sense to us. This is, this is somebody that you met once or twice, maybe through me. You're not friends. You know, she's my friend. I invited her, but you're desperately trying to because her other half is the name she brought up that and, um, Toya was supposed to have the uh, affair, uh, uh, affair with. Um, all that said, I mean, the point here, or the reason why I'm here, R Richie, is to basically clear the confusion and the rumor. And I want to say once and for all that this rumor did not start from me or the neighborhood. It came to me from Anila. Did I hear it? Yes. Did I hear it from anyone else in the neighborhood? No. I heard it from Anila and to be a supportive friend who I am to all of my friends, my real friends, um, I did not want to bring up her name. Hence I said, I've heard it, I've heard it and not mentioned a name, but Zaina is my priority. Right. And since Zaina, his name been bought, Zaina's name has been brought up and Zaina wasn't there to defend herself. I'm now here to defend myself and now I can mention where I heard it from. And it's, it's really, truly sad, but, um, but yeah, that's, that's where it came from to me, at least that's who I heard it from. Wow. So 
when it when it came to you did she specifically say that it was with that particular man no that particular man's name came up later and again it's something she put she put she that put together. together she put she put that one together after knowing that my friend was having some relationship issues because she invited that friend to her house with some a couple of other ladies in the house. She handpicked some ladies. Looking back at it now, I see why some of those ladies were picked. Um, and so after that, she put that together because her story would then make sense. Uh, but the uh, um, Toya sleeping around, that came from Anila to me. Um, to the, you know, she even mentioned that she saw different cars outside Toya's house. Now this is a really big neighborhood. I live right by the front gate and they live closer to each other. So I guess they drive past each other's house and see what car who drives and what drive car is in what driveway. So that's how he kind of started or how Anila started the uh, conversation with me about seeing different cars, different men, all of that stuff outside Toya's house. But my friend's um, uh, name came up after she had heard that they're having issues in the relationship. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you know, I kind of want to also speak to, I'm going to, I'm talking to you, but I, I'm also talking to the viewer who who's watching. Um, sometimes we talk about reality TV shows and how um, friends and associates and people who are, you know, kind of, I think every reality TV star needs a support system to film, yes. with. you know, a, a group that they can sort of have around them for their own personal stories. Yeah. And so you were someone who kind of fulfilled that for not only Toya at one point in time, but also yeah. for Anila. Right. And it also, listen, hey, if you're actually in the friend group, it makes sense. Yeah. You have a storefront, mm -hmm. which we also need to know the name of so we can yes. put it, you know, we want people to go visit. I you guess. Know, but, yeah. Um, you know, so all it, it, it all makes sense that you would be a part of this of this yeah. circle because you actually live in the neighborhood and these yes. these people, they're, they're actually working with you. Yes. Um, I, I just want to say I am so sorry that you have been pulled in in a way that didn't showcase you in, I think, the light that maybe you were initially led to believe that it would as just yeah. a supportive role. Oh, absolutely. And, and, you know, more so than a su supportive role it is, yes, a supportive role as a friend. Uh, but, you know, I, I'm also a neighbor and I'm not just, you know, going back to uh, Toya and as I mentioned, we weren't just neighbors. We were, again, really you know, captain in a, a, a tennis team together, our children are hanging out, our friends are hanging, uh, our husbands are hanging out. We literally spend several hours a day with each other, right? Um, and with Anila, um, yes, yeah, she came into the neighborhood, but going through the process of buying her house from her, there's a lot of, a long story around that as well. But, you know, we got to sort of spend a lot of time together trying yeah. to um, uh, go through that transaction. Our husbands got to know each other through, each other through that transaction. And I truly actually really felt sorry for Anila because she does play victim very well. She deserves an Oscar for that. Um, it's always very much like, oh, but you know, but everybody's picking on me. I'm different. I'm the different one in the show, Zaina. And you know, I don't have the comebacks. I don't have the, you know, wittiness they have. And they've been in the show together and they gang up on me. And you know, I'm one of five sisters. And I take a very sisterly role, you know, to a fault. Um, and that's how, that's what I, I guess if, you know, that, that's how I felt. And a lot of, there were people in the neighborhood who have actually said this, that you almost come across like an older sister to Anila. So when all this came out, you know, people were shocked. And, you know, it, it, what, what Anila is doing now, since I've sent her my last message, which was not a very nice message, um, but to say, I don't want to ever talk to you again. I don't ever want to see you again. Um, I, it takes a lot for me to call somebody the devil, but I said, you sold yourself to the devil by making such a horrible, horrible, you know, rumor about somebody, because here's the thing as a mother, 
as a wife, as a family, you know, person, even if this rumor about Toya was true and I knew about it, it would not be something that I would repeat again to anybody because our husbands still speak, our children still talk to each other. This is not me. And so this is the reason why I felt like, you know, this is such a devilish act. And so that was my last text, text to Anila saying, you sold yourself to the devil, whatever reason why, you know, well, I know the reason you needed a storyline. Um, so you figured you come up with something so nasty and then just rope somebody in that's done much for you. I mean, you're talking about, uh, you know, um, when she had her house bur burgled last, Richie, my husband and I were out of town. We travel a lot. We are close to our gate. We're pulling in and I get a frantic call from her. And she said, somebody's going in my house. Can you run? Now, these people could have been armed. My husband drops me off of the driveway. He runs to her house. And I said, if she's getting burgled, these people could be armed. Why are you going? He got there before the police officers got there. These are some of the things we did for this girl. And so for me to call her a devil, you can see why. Um, and, and there's just so much more. So going back to what I was saying, she plays victim very, very well. And I fell for it. And I've learned a lesson for, from it. Mm -hmm. um where do you and toya stand at this point where do you stand with like toya quad and the rest yeah. of the ladies at this point um you know toya and i not speaking to each other but we're not enemies um, right right uh we're still neighbors uh our boys still speak i love her boys um eugene and chris i know i don't think they're hanging out hanging out but they're still friends um so i would say we're just cordial we're just cordial you know where we are um I, you know as for um quad i consider her her a good friend um i don't need to defend quad she can she can you know um, um <laughs> defend herself we all know that oh, but oh, yeah. I, I will say this about quad um the very little time i've known her quad owns her part Wrong or right, good, bad, she owns her part. And because she was pulled into this, she, uh, you know, she, she was, you know, it's, it, the, the, I think in some ways, Anila tried to rope her into it. The lunches and the dinners, and then, you know, you know, so say it, say it, say more. And then she saw an opportunity where, um, you know, we, the three of us had something in common, which was, you know, Zaina's not getting along with Toya, Anila's not getting along with Toya and Quad wasn't getting along with Toya. So Anila thought, what a good little group to put together to bring out some whatever, right? And so um, I, you know, going back to Quad, um, she is someone that I really, really respect because of that reason where she will own her part. And I know in this part, she had nothing to do with this rumor. I have not heard once Quad say, that about, say anything about this rumor. She doesn't live in the neighborhood. She doesn't mm. know what goes on in this neighborhood. She can only know anything about this neighborhood if someone from the neighborhood tells her. So this whole thing about, you know, um, Anila saying that Quad called and told on a phone call, something that I heard like that, doesn't even make sense. Quad wouldn't have been able to know this without somebody from the neighborhood telling her. Hmm. Zaina, your neighborhood seems very interesting. <laughs> it's a fantastic neighborhood. Unfortunately, there are some people that, you know, we, you guys, there isn't a show about the nice people, put it that way. <laughs> um, Zaina, I, can I just tell you, I love your energy. I just think you are radiant, you have a light about you. I hope that this experience um, takes you in a different direction, uh, a design show, um, something, something, because you definitely have a great personality. You are Thank an you. amazing storyteller. I was literally hanging on to your every word as you sort of opened up about this experience. And I wanna mm -hmm. say thank you for that. Thank you, um, can you tell people where they can find you and tell them about yeah. your showrooms as well? Because I want them to leave with the knowledge of, you know, where they can get more from you. Absolutely. So the showroom is called Exquisite Living. Okay. 
and it is um, uh, based in Alpharetta, Georgia. And we have a beautiful showroom where we curate a lot of the items. 90% uh, of it is custom made. A lot, some of it's designed by myself. Um, and we shop all around the world. Our style is uh, very much around European clean line modern uh, with a touch of, it's very eclectic at the same time, but very glam, you know, jazzy, unique. Um, so it's really a fun place to come and visit if nothing else. But okay. thank you for introducing uh, the, the, the business. Absolutely. I want to make sure and I, I will get all of that and I will put it in the description so that people can visit the links, you. you know, and and see everything that is going on with Zena. It has been actually a pleasure to so speak much. with you today you. and hear this story. And I'm so glad that you were able to clear your name and yes. hopefully be able to move on from this with, yes. you know, feeling lighter. Yes, and, and, and I do. And I want to thank you for the given, get, for giving me the opportunity. As I said, you know, it's very easy to rope somebody in and mention somebody, you know, if, they're, if they don't have a voice and, yeah. um, and they're, they're, they're not there to defend themselves. So this gives me an opportunity to, you know, say my piece. So I appreciate that. And thank you very much for doing that. Take absolutely. Time. Absolutely. Anytime, anytime. And if there's something that you ever want to promote, definitely hit us up on the back end. We have your information. You We're have delighted. ours. So anytime I can support, you know, any of our people, um, especially from the shows or people that we know from the shows and, you know, I'm always happy to help with that. So We'd love, please, to. Please. We'd love to. And same here. If there's anything I can do and please, if you're ever in Atlanta, please come and visit us and uh, let me know if there's anything I can do to help. Awesome. Sky Squad, I hope you guys enjoyed this interview. Zaina, you are a pleasure. And we will catch you guys in the Thank next you. video. Thank you so much.